Hey there, everyone. I'm Samuel Johnson. And I'm Haley Dudley. And welcome back to the Steven Universe Retrospectives. And today we're going to be discussing episodes five and episode six of Steven Universe, Frybo and Catfinger. So before we get to talk about the episodes, brief thoughts on them. I mean, I, I always find Steven Universe exceedingly entertaining. These are two are some great episodes, I have to say. Um, Catfinger's mildly disturbing and... Frybo, like, for such a calm monster, weird. <laughs> yes. Anyway. So, yeah. So, let's we'll get to the minor plot summaries. The name of the game for these episodes is Psychological Scarring, and it becomes apparent from the first episode. In this case, what's going on is that Steven has gotten his hands on a gem shard, so to speak. One that's part of a group of many that Pearl is that Pearl is looking for. That sh how he got it was that the shard managed to get into his pants, and the thing with each of these sh with the, each of these shards that whatever article of clothing they're inhabiting, they bring to life. And thus, the parent and when Steven catches it, initially he, he thinks that he can control it because it seems to follow orders. As such, when he goes to try and bring it back to Pearl, he ends up going to out to Beach City and goes to the fry and what was it a fry shack? Was yeah, it? it's the fry shack. Yeah, the fry shack, and he runs into their mascot, a giant milkshake. It's a giant carton of, fr of fries named Frybo. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's in and in the person inside the mascot suit is the son of the owner of the fry shop named Petey, mm -hmm. who who ultimately who is being put in there because he has to be given more responsibility in the, at the shop and his dad just threw him in here because his dad is proud of Frybo. Ultimately, PD hates the job because a big thing with it is being attacked by seagulls pretty much all the time and so he just kind of wishes that he could that's the, the, that this suit could do work on its own while he could just go off and have some fun and so stevens and so steven decides to help him out first by taking over the suit before he gets attacked by seagulls and then ultimately then ultimately by trying to use the shard to bring the suit to life which does seem to work as it as it seems to move on its own does its own thing and ultimately pd orders the suit to just get people to eat fries while he and steven go off to have fun However, that doesn't really last long as while Petey's off having fun on a little, what was it, a motorized mm -hmm. seahorse? Mm -hmm. He ends up having an existential crisis and realizes the futility of it all, which I love that scene <laughs> because as he's riding it, you can just see the child the in him. First rise, joy in the eyes. The second rise, oh crap, this isn't as good as I used to remember it being. The third rise, no, there's no real joy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah as such he just has an existential crisis and realizes that, may that maybe he shouldn't be doing this but then they hear screaming coming from the fry shop he steven and him go to check it out and it turns out that frybo took the order of make people eat fries very seriously as it is grabbing people and make and forcing fries down their throats <laughs> and what and unfortunately at this point it's no longer listening to steven and Petey. as such they try to stop it but it keeps overpowering them and so Pearl, who was still looking for the last shard, comes across it, sees what's going on, and is able to put two and two together. But as she tries to stop Frybo, she gets blasted in the face with ketchup because she tried stabbing it in the eye with one of her spears, and it bleeds ketchup, apparently. <laughs> yeah. And so, but this, but this causes the, because she had all the shards in a bubble, it causes the bubble to pop, and so Steven takes the shards and... Get, puts them in each one of his in a piece of his clothing, and so he sticks the clothing on Frybo, and managed to, and they managed to hold it down enough for Steven to get the last shard out. As such, the episode ends with them burning Frybo because while it was going on a rampage, PD yelled at a thing and talked about how much he hated it, and his dad realized that maybe he was pushing putting too much pressure on his son, and so it burn and so they yeah like I said they burn it, mm -hmm. give it a Miking funeral, yeah. I, I just want to take a second to appreciate the ingenuity of Steven to strip down to his draws and make a clothing army to attack the giant foam fries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did that. He definitely did that. Wait, who would think of that? <laughs> Only a 13-year-old kid with aspirations of becoming a superhero. Truth. <laughs> but, this also, but this also brings us to episode six, Cat Fingers. And in this episode... We get we see a bit more of the gem's abilities. Now this one was showcased in previous episodes, but I never really took the time to talk about it because it really wasn't important for the story. In this case, one of the gem's primary abilities is the ability to shape shift. It's something that all gems are supposed to be able to do, but not many. But it, and how they how they can do it is they can transform into literally anything. It can be an animal, an object, make what make a part of their body bigger, and but. 
the war, the way Amethyst uses it to screw with people, as the episode actually opens with Steven and his dad do it, doing his dad's job of, of washing cars, and Amethyst comes in as a cat and sprays them with a hose. And so, once Steven learns that, ge that all gems can do this, he thinks, well, how can I do it? How can I make these th How can I shapeshift? But even Amethyst admits, actually, it does take a bit more effort than you think. <laughs> as such... As it, she tells Steven that if he wants to shapeshift, he should start small. In this case, she he she recommends maybe a cat. And so Steven tries to shapeshift and he takes her advice of trying to be focused and loose and all that. And he does sort of succeed. He shapeshifts, shifts like that counts for something. He shapeshifts his pointer finger into a cat, a fully autonomous cat that's connected to him <laughs> via via the digit. At first, Steven is ecstatic and goes out to Beach City to show everyone. First, he shows it to his dad, who freaks out. He then bring he then goes he then try, tries to show kissing it further by transforming each of his fingers into other cats. Mm -hmm. Then he goes to the fry shack and into and shows it off there to feed the cats, which horrifies Fryman, the owner of the fry shack, and Petey. And to try and show it off further, he transforms the digits on his other hand into cat fingers. But the problem with all that is. He can't control them. They are fully autonomous and do kind of their own thing. And quickly things go wrong when Steven learns he can't, that he can't really use them as fingers anymore because they're friggin' cats. And would you like it if I did this all the time? Yeah. That's what's, yeah, that's what, sorry about that. No, it's all good, I get. <laughs> yeah, that's just what, but that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. The cats don't like being used as fingers. And unfortunately, when Steven and... For Steven can't really get a, a handle on them. So then right. when he tries asking the gems for help, they're not around because they're on a mission to fight a living island. And so Steven thinks, okay, fine. I brought these things out. I can put them back. No, it gets <laughs> worse. His attempts to try and get rid of the cat fingers just causes them to spread as parts of his body begin sprouting cat heads. Like his <laughs> head actually transforms into a full cat head. So does his leg. And he's quickly running out of options. And so he... With no other parental figures there, he goes to see his dad. But by that point, the cat heads have just popped up all over his body. And it's... It's horrifying. Very like, horrifying. That is the stuff you find on creepypasta. <laughs> yeah, Steven has no control over these things. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, horrible. You can see his face among the cat heads. And he's just desperate, crying mm -hmm. out for help. There are tears in his eyes. He just wants these things to go mm -hmm. away, but he can't control them. However, as Steven is ranting about it and saying, I can't, I'm just going to accept this. I'm a monster now. I can't go on gem missions, mm -hmm. but and I can't ever have a water bite with you because these things hate water. Mm -hmm. And he realizes, wait, that's the key. As such, his dad tries turning a hose on him, which works a little bit. Temporarily. But all it does is really piss the cats off and try to attack Greg. As such, to try and really get rid of them, Steven cr cr just drags himself into the car wash and they turn on the super wash. Which does ultimately cure Steven of the cat fingers, save one, which they take care of with the hose. As such, the episode ends with the gems coming back and them checking on Steven. They see he's fine, they're relieved, and the last bit of advice is that Pearl should, is Pearl telling Steven that maybe he should listen to her and not Amethyst, mm -hmm. and Steven trying to assault them with cat puns, and they rightfully walk away. I mean, those puns were pretty great. They were amazing. They were horrible. Height of humor. <laughs> Puns are evil and deserve to die. Psh, matter of opinion. And the, my opinion is right. I mean, you can think that. <laughs> because it is. Okay. Um, so anyway, first, let's first, Frybo. I do think it's a nice episode. And it's again, and it's, I think, the, and this and it and Catfingers are kind of what I consider the beginning of the dark times for the show. <laughs> and I don't mean that in the sense of, oh, the show gets bad after this. No. This is the first of the traumas that we start to see. And it starts with Frybo. Because the first, it's kind of like an initial... It's an, The premise for the episode is a pretty simple one. Mm -hmm. To get out of work, they they intentionally enchant this piece of... Ar this article of clothing to come to life and do the job for them. And realistically, things get out of hand. Mm -hmm. But what I think what makes it work well is the imagery in the episode. Like, just seeing... Frybo going insane because it's honest to God horrifying. Mm -hmm. Like first, like it starts small because when the costume comes to life, it, it doesn't have legs. So the legs are provided by whoever wears it. But so it sprouts legs and they look like fries. But then you start seeing it attacking people and it's just creepy because it has because its head looks like, oh no, it doesn't look like milkshake. 
I just realized yeah. it's a cup of fries. Yeah, like I said. <laughs> I'm stupid. Frybo, fries, fry shack, you know? Um, all good. Yeah. Like, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm stupid. I didn't realize that. But yeah, I, like the fries that make up its hair are attacking people and pulling them in. And as it's doing this, you can like see blue and red mm -hmm. veins around its body. It's yeah. just... So freaking creepy. Monstrous food. It's... And, the fa and the whole time, it's got this cartoony little smile on its face because that's just the costume. Mm -hmm. And the way it's do, and the with that smile on it as it grabs people, forces them in, and just... just Force feeding like, yeah, fries. Yeah, it's just shoving... It just shoves fries down their mm -hmm. gullets. And anytime someone tries running away, it just grabs them and pulls mm -hmm. them back. It's... Like, it's pretty freaky. <laughs> it is really freaky. And it's just kind of, and it's just really kind of disturbing. And it's all just based on the imagery, especially when Pearl stabs the thing in its eye. The blood explosion of ketchup. Like, yeah. It's just creepy. It's it just, really is. It really is honestly kind of creepy. And then you have the cat fingers episode. Mm -hmm. That one I think is, is just, it really does. It, it starts small because Admittedly, when you first see the cat finger, it is creepy, but it acts like a it's, cat. It's cute in a weird way. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah, it, and it reacts the same way a cat would. It purrs when you pet it. If you mm -hmm. poke it, it bites you. Mm -hmm. And that, but then little by little, you see them popping up, and yeah, it's creepy. Yeah. I mean, with the Frypo episode, um, I have to say, like, one of my favorite things about it is because we, the whole, you know, idea of an episode where somehow a suit of clothing or some sort of clothing article comes to life and takes over is not a new one. I do appreciate that the way that the whole Frybo incident came about was Stephen just trying to be helpful. Because Stephen offered to take um, Petey's place as playing Frybo and then was chased by uh, seagulls immediately after putting on the costume. So... Then they decided to animate it. And so they were just trying, you know, he was just trying to be helpful and everything. And Petey is just trying to recapture his youth that somehow that child has lost so hard along the way. Like, he needs a hug, a milkshake, and a vacation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it makes it, you know, it, I feel like that just makes it a little bit better. And But then the, like, actual Frybo creature, the fact that it's... The costume doesn't really change. They don't add any extra emotion to the, you know, no. facial expressions or anything like that to, like, you know, make it more of a monster. They just let it be a costume that's come to life. It's, it makes it very ominous because it's very, very flat and it's just doing exactly what you told it to do. The only problem is it, it that's all. It's it, doing exactly what you told it to do. <laughs> make people eat fries. Mm -hmm. It's making people eat fries. And it's not, li and when they try, and unfortunately, by the time they realize that the, what they're doing, is, what it's doing is wrong, it's not listening to them in even further orders. Right. It's just, it's actually pretty, it is just, yeah, it's a really creepy mm -hmm. thing. And then you get to the cat fingers, seeing them just slowly covering mm -hmm. Steven's body. Like, again, little, bu <laughs> like, sorry. No, go, yeah, go ahead. Can you just imagine being poor Steven and just being slowly consumed by random cat bodies and or being Greg as your son comes shuffling out of the darkness and it's just a blob of cat bits? And to have to figure out how to not have that happen anymore just it's ugh. good body horror honestly because it really is it's like it's not it's like it's nothing there's nothing gory about it no. which i'm which i'm fine with i hate gore but just seeing like the like just seeing steven's body be little by little subsumed mm -hmm. by these creatures and him having no control over any mm -hmm. of them because this because he tries fighting back and they resist he actually tries like growing like the, like you see them growing out of him you see him just actively fighting against them mm -hmm. they are clearly overpowering him and you can see the fear and horror in his eyes as he's losing control mm -hmm. and realizing i might be stuck like this that whole 10 second scene at the car wash oh my goodness that was a very emotionally intense scene and for a kid show Ex like it for being so soft and fluffy you are right it was straight body horror and like Wow, I've never seen something that be done that effectively while still remaining that level of PG. Just, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's just the yeah, it's just disturbing in the right way. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't cross over anything that would be 
adult, but it's still horrifying. The idea of just losing yourself to this creature and your body is turning against you and that it's growing these things. When the cat has to actually start popping out of his body, it legitimately looks off and just oh, weird 100%. like it looks a little like the cat fingers themselves are creepy enough especially as steven grew all of his fingers into them but to see them just grow across his body to the point where they mm -hmm. the point where they did just yeah yeah like when you see him get to the actual car wash and you see him moving across it's like he is it's not that he's like walking or moving it's like this continuously changing blob of different cat parts as the different cats roll around and surface out and it's like oh goodness and yeah like, yeah. there's no Steven, only cats. Mm -hmm. And just poor Steven, being the small child he is, trying to learn his powers and everything, and this is the introduction. And yeah. <laughs> you, just as you said earlier, this is, it truly is the, like, introduction of the trauma dealing with for poor, poor Steven. Mm -hmm. But really good. Yeah, it's really well. Both episodes, I think, do well in that, especially in the creativity, because... Again, for both situations, they do showcase more of Steven being smart. Mm -hmm. Like, when he realizes that the that the, that the Frybo suit is out of control, he instead decides to use a different solution and in, uh, end up and uses the other shards to bring his clothes to life mm -hmm. to enact, act as an army. Because he does, uh, he's, he realizes these things at least listen in the beginning. Because, which I do like that, though I think the funny part was when Pearl actually did explain the backstory of the shards and the horrific details <laughs> surrounding it. He's not listening and he's droning off because he's lost because he's lost his pants and that's all he's thinking about. Realizing that Pearl has been talking to him and telling him something important. Oh crap! I can't start listening now. <laughs> and then in the end, when Pearl realizes what she what he did, it's like, didn't you hear anything about what I said? No. no! It's like, no, oh, Stephen. That was honestly funny. It was. It really was great. And then I also appreciate in um, the cat fingers when the, um, Pearl is talking about Amethyst, you know, uh, you should definitely listen to me and not Amethyst. Yeah, probably right. <laughs> yeah, Ameth I like that. Mm -hmm. Amethyst is just kind of rolling with it, which mm -hmm. again fits her personality. Right. Another thing about this episode, though, that I do like is that this is also one of the episodes where we're introduced more to the townsfolk of Beach City. We have seen them here and there in the previous episodes; they've been parts of the story. Mm -hmm. But this is the one. But these two episodes, at the very least, showcase them more, or at least Frybo does. Mm -hmm. And it starts with the Fry Shack as we're introduced to Petey and his family. Again, and especially his brother, who we'll talk about later. Yeah. But it's a but it's a nice little start and a good way to get introductions out of the way as we are, as we get a chance to see who Petey is. That he's just kind of about that he's a kid, kind of like Stephen, but he's ready to take on more responsibility. His dad's obsessed with fries to the point where his hair and his kid's hair looks like fries. We got we got again Ronaldo, who is in, who that part of the re who helps make Steven realize in the next episode about the cat fingers and how dangerous they are. Cause he took a picture of Steven with them and Steven tried to hold it again. <laughs> I'm not going to do it again, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, like that. So that's the night. So that's a little bit of introduction we do. And we do see more characters that do become important later. So again, it's nice laying the groundwork for that. And again, again, and again, I think, and again, we all, Oh yeah. And also, we, Oh yeah. The creativity with Steven. I lost mm -hmm. that point. <laughs> but yeah, again, we also see Steven being creative and taking care of the cat fingers. Because earlier in the episode, when Steven went to go show the first cat, cat finger to his dad, his dad freaked out and dropped his water bottle and some of it splashed on the finger and <laughs> reacted negatively. And so uh, when Steven is being subsumed by these things, he realizes, wait, these things hate water. Maybe we can get rid of them if we do that. So mm -hmm. I, like, I like that. It's smart. Right. It's a very ingenious thinking on his part. And, you know works out well as far as the storytelling element and I, I appreciate in both these episodes you can see Steven for not having all of the best ideas to begin with may end up in trouble is always looking for a solution yeah so he is always trying he mm -hmm. is genuinely trying mm -hmm. and again one thing I do showcase in these episodes is that he is trying that he is helpful and does want to be included especially right. like we saw like again we saw with Petey when he actively helped him <laughs> this thing keeps leaning down when he when he tried helping him out when what led to the catastrophe was him trying to help out or in the or the second episode he wanted to learn shape shifting because he just wanted to learn more about his gem powers and mm -hmm. so forth so again those two episodes do showcase that well so mm -hmm. but otherwise though I think both episodes were good Frybo was a nice was a nice little bit of shot was a nice little bit of scariness with seeing the Frybo costume come to life and everything that goes on there and the cat fingers episode was not only a good introduction to the shape shifting idea but it had some really good body horror with the cats as they subsumed Steven and both episodes did well in showcasing Steven being capable and smart in these situations mm -hmm. and dealing with crises so 
Mm-hmm. I one more thing I will say with the Frybo episode. Um, it was cool to see Steven interact with humans his own age, you know, and just kind of yeah. hang out and be a kid and all yeah. that fun stuff. Which you know, not weird for Steven to you know go out and be a kid, but like it's mm-hmm. cool to see him do outside of the gems and in the whole city rather than yeah, yeah. than just being then yeah, just being secluded to the gems. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then with the uh, cat fingers, um, it. It's interesting, for, in my opinion, to see, you know, Steven trying to work on his shape-shifting abilities when, yes, he is part gem, and, like, Amethyst says, yeah, if you have a gem, you should be able to shape-shift and everything. Um, the fact that no one really knows how to teach Steven to do these things and everything, even when, like, Amethyst is talking to him about how to do this stuff, she's like, you just kind of picture what you want and shake it out and then transforms and then that's her entire lesson yeah and so you know the fact that he it got to where he got to with creating you know the cat fingers and all that fun stuff i'm sure that felt like a huge accomplishment to him and everything because yeah he's never done it before right but like at the same time no one has ever explained to him how to do these things and when you think about the fact that um the reason why gems have their shape-shifting powers comes from, like, their bodies are, like, basically light structures and not... Spoiler! Oh, sorry. <laughs> ah, forget it. Never mind. They'll, get, they'll, they'll, explain, they'll explain, like, a few episodes. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, their bodies are light structures, not, like, actual, fl- like, physical bodies. That's think, they... hard like ho- think hard light hologram. Right. And that's, you know, why they... Um, and so the, the fact that he was able to change his form while having a physical human body is beyond anything the gems can do because he's not just changing the light structure of how he, you know, how his form presents and reflects light. He is physically changing his flesh and blood body. Like, yeah. first off, that's horrible and horrifying and traumatizing beyond yeah. belief, but like, it's it's cool to see him, you know, try and manipulate that. I just, yeah. I feel bad that he does not have a better yeah. teachings with it. Because... Yeah, I think you made a good analogy about when we were watching the episode about mm-hmm. how it's like someone who spent their entire life swimming is trying to teach someone who's never seen a lake in his life. Right, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. But I think, and again, I think, I think that actually showcases another thing. The gems don't really do a lot to teach Steven unless he shows an interest in the powers. Like, in the first episode, when Steven summoned his shield, he wanted to know, how do I summon this? And he went to each of the gems, and they each had different methods to how they do it. No method was the same. But likewise, when it comes to shapeshifting, they don't... But again, they didn't tell Steven about the weapon until he asked about it, and he seemed to show interest in it, or showed that he was making progress. Likewise, with shapeshifting, a similar case. Steve, they didn't. The, the gems didn't do anything to teach Steven about it until he asked about it, mm-hmm. which, in a way, does sort of make sense based on what we learn about the gems later. I'm not going to say what we do learn about them later, but needless to say, it does make. But needless to say, it does sort of explain why they don't bother teaching Steven this stuff unless he asks. Mm-hmm. So I mean. I- based off of what I'm guessing that you're referring to with spoiler things, um, that on top of the fact that the gems are not human, the gems have never really learned to be human. They've just learned to exist adjacent to humans. And Steven, despite having gem powers, is more related to humans as his inner, like in, in his mannerisms, in his, you know, everyday life than he is to a gem. And so there is a bit of a disconnect there, and I really don't think the gems at this point in their relationship know exactly how to deal with Steven outside of, we made sure you didn't die today. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> like, I mean, they do showcase, they, they do try to give him support and care, but yeah, but yeah, right. but yeah. That they, they don't, it's that, like, that's how their relationship is at this point in the show. Mm-hmm. They do want Steven to be part of their group, and they do care about him, and they obviously love him and want, mm-hmm. and want him to excel, but there is a bit of a disconnect mm-hmm. because Steven's half human and these are powerful warriors who are not, who have, who, like you said, they're, are, they're war veterans, with PTSD, <laughs> Yeah, they're, 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 but they're human adjacent. Right. So yeah, there are, so yeah, I do kind of like how that is showcased in these episodes because mm-hmm. you do see the disconnect and how it changes because they do obviously love Steven. They want the best for him. But they don't know the best way to deal to deal with him mm-hmm. yet, which I think which they do expand on and is expanded upon in later episodes. So, right. 
so so yeah, that's a good thing. That's a nice little bit of groundwork in the beginning. Right. So, I like that. I definitely like that as well. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Can you think of anything else? I mean, I was just going to add one more thing, and then I promise I'm Go done. Ahead. Um, I like you're saying, you know, it adds the groundwork for later scenes and everything. And, you know, it the the disconnect we see here with you know uh, Amethyst trying to teach Stephen about his uh, shape shifting powers. It really just like when you look at later episodes and having watched like stuff all the way through and everything it the amount of growth between now and even like 10 episodes down the line is really intriguing when it comes to how the gems to relate to steven because like that being told to just picture something in your mind and then shake it off and then you'll be that thing is not an adequate explanation even if you have the powers to shapeshift into the thing like that yeah. doesn't tell you that anything. would actually probably explain why steven reacted the way he did because mm -hmm. he never got tutelage. Right. It was like being thrown... Because Amethyst just told him, just shapeshift. And mm -hmm. so, because Steven never had proper instruction for it, it went wrong because he had no idea what the hell he was doing. Right, and... Amethyst, for Amethyst, it's something that she could do from the day she was popped out, mm -hmm. and odds are she had instruction from other gems. But with Steven, he never had instruction. Amethyst just said, just do this thing and do it, and he technically did it, but because it was still foreign territory for mm -hmm. it, it would explain why it went wrong. Right. Probably helped by the fact that he is half-human and not exactly a full gem. Right, and then the fact that, like, he was trying this without any supervision from anyone who knew better, aside from the first time he did it with Amethyst, which then she was just kind of like, eh, whatever, about it, and called it a day. And even when he was chasing the boat down as the as the, uh, the gems, gems were leaving in order to, you know, to go off to fight an island, um, <laughs> they, like, he's trying to keep his hands out of the water because the cats don't like the water, but he's trying to run after the boat and they can see something's wrong, but yeah. because he's like, no, it's fine, I got it. They well, just believe him. Well, to be go. fair, Pearl did want to go back, but the thing <laughs> is that it was because the uh, Garnet said the island right. was a geological emergency, it had to be dealt with right away. Right. I, like, I understand why they had to go and everything, but like even like looking back and you know or i should say looking forward um they they would have just leave him alone in that situation they would at least brought him to greg or something some yeah. like to have someone there rather than just being left to figure out you're now sentient fingers like yeah. that's clear the gems aren't good at this stuff no and it's a huge jump later but like anyway, yeah that's all they do get better at the job eventually but <laughs> Yeah, overall, but yeah, overall, these are good episodes. Mm -hmm. Fribo was a good one. Fribo definitely did well in, sh in introducing more of the characters from Beach City, showcasing Steven's interactions with them, setting some groundwork for later episodes, though that I think that one is more cat fingers, mm -hmm. but, but also giving us some adequate scares with seeing Fribo in action and going off the rails. And then we got cat fingers, which again does well in introducing story introducing the shape-shifting stuff and establishing it more and showcasing Steven's level of intelligence with it and the body horror with the cats in there, so... That's good stuff. So overall, both these are good episodes. Mm -hmm. Not really, nothing too big happens in them, but they are still a good episodes and entertaining to watch, and definitely set and definitely set the groundwork for the drama that's going to have a couple the fall Mister Universe later in his life. So I think that's that about child it. Child needs a hug and some therapy. Oh, he definitely, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he definitely did. But yeah, that's about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. I'm Samuel Johnson. And I'm Haley Dudley. And I'll see you next week when we talk about episode seven and eight. So till then, I'll till then. Hope you have a good night. And take care.